In this session, we will be looking at subsidiary profit making enterprises. The objectives of this session are to enable us to understand what subsidiary profit making enterprises are and how to use such a model or the profit making enterprise as an alternative um, source of generating revenue to support our social causes. We hope that by the end of this session, we will be able to understand the advantages and possible disadvantages of setting up this model in our respective organizations. We will know the gradual steps that we need to follow to implement this model in our organizations, and we will be able to create an organizational action plan for implementation. In the course of this presentation, we will be looking at the key features of the subsidiary profit-making uh, business, the benefits of this model, potential users of the subsidiary profit-making enterprise, uh, benefits of subsidiary profit-making enterprise, the challenges of subsidiary profit-making enterprises, and the steps to establishing a subsidiary profit making enterprise. The key question that may be coming to mind now is what is a subsidiary? In simple terms, a subsidiary is a company owned and controlled by another company. Owning, the owning company is called the parent company or holding company and the system protects assets of various properties from each other's liabilities. In this case, as a civil society organization, you can decide to create a for-profit company, but remember, the profits generated are used to run the affairs of the civil society organization. Some key features of the of this model um, are that it allows civil society organizations to make profit and achieve their social purpose. It is purely commercial, uh, it is purely a commercial enterprise that generates funds that can be used by organizations to either implement programs, to expand the scope of their operations, to enhance their capacity, so go for trainings, um, um, recruit more staff, you know, buy equipment for the organization, and as well build infrastructure. So construct your building, you know, put up the right adequate facilities that you need to operate as a civil society organization. A key benefit of this is, is in line with tax exemption when the revenues derived from the economic activities sufficiently related to the statutory or public benefit purpose of the organization. However, with this, it will be important for you um, following this session to study what the laws of your country says because it varies, the applicability of this element may vary from one country to the other, from one uh, context to the other. It also protects no, uh, non-governmental organizations from debates and claims involving their subsidiary and uh, activities because clearly this is an entity that generates uh, 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 income. Um, it is clearly accountable you know, you, you generate the income, it is, its accounts are audited and they are transparent. However, you use the profits to plow it back into the operations of the civil society organization. Um, some civil society organizations that can um, use this model um, involve organizations that respect specific requirements, so organizational and legal um, um, requirements, once you meet them, then you can be able to um, apply this model to the work of your organization or associated burden of additional compliance and administrative um, costs. 
The key steps that we need to take into account when putting in place the, this model is first of all, identify the need for the profit-making enterprise. Um, in that case, you need to carry out a market survey, you know, to scope the market and see what is actually the need that if you intervene, it can, it can enable you to uh, make significant uh, returns on investment. Secondly, you need to develop a business plan. Um, thirdly, you need to develop a budget that will facilitate the implementation of the business plan. Fourth, you need to seek board advice and guidance. Fifth, you need to pilot the implementation of the business plan and review progress. And it is important to know that at this stage, you may decide to continue, you may decide to change it, you may decide to, to halt. It all depends on the lessons you've learned from the process, but most importantly, consult with the board of your organization and have board approval before you proceed. So it is important to know that as a service delivery organization, you can have the, the possibility of operating such a model to scale up your work. Thank you.